What's up guys? Welcome to a new episode of Beat Roots. I'm here with Nick, aka Ghost in the Machine. What's the track called? It's Medulla Oblongata. It's a track originally from the Fight Club soundtrack that I decided to remix. Okay, interesting. Let's hop in and take a listen here. Maybe tell us your inspiration. Yeah, so uh, this track was a part of the Fight Club soundtrack and that was sort of one of those um, pieces of music that really got me into sort of electronic music and using it to create emotion and and soundscapes and every time I would listen to the original of this I was like I wish it was longer I wish I could hear more to it I wish it kind of got developed a little bit more and then as I started to get more into music production I was like I want to do this both as sort of an homage to my inspirations but then also something that I would be uh, excited about and kind of put my own spin on okay interesting yeah we were saying how it's unusual that uh, somebody is inspired by the soundtrack to a movie, right? And then that's like something that kicked off your musical career in some ways. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you know between that and then like more more recently, like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross have done a lot of scoring, and that's sort of been their direction. I've just sort of naturally gravitated towards is yeah. uh, trying to use a little bit more of not the typical tons of strings and you know the typical sound it scores you think of, but yeah. sort of trying to mix in some electronic music and a little bit of the dancey vibe to stuff to try to get a bit of that emotion as well. Yeah, I'm I'm curious on that note. Like, what about this uh, caught your attention? Yeah, so it's a very short loop, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So this part is about it for the entirety of what I took from the original. There's other little parts that I sort of put in to to kind of keep that homage and keep true to the original. But uh, I, I that harp noise is just something that I think is is absolutely it's beautiful. It's rich. It's kind of full. Yeah, and I love if you right at the end of it. It sort of does a delan, and then you hear this, ee. and so yeah. I'm wondering. I was like, ever since I was, I was like, what did they do to create that? And I love that sort of piece of it. And I was like, I'm gonna keep that, and then add on sort of my own spin to it from there. Yeah, it sounds like also the last little part of that uh, loop, you kind of like repeat exactly one more time. And the other thing I'm curious about is like you have this really interesting like a uh, kind of snary drum intro that like fits really well into bringing in like the first part of the kick drums really like tinny, raw kick drums. Exactly, and I think that was sort of, um, I wanted to get the beat established. It was uh, a little bit of a crutch for myself also to make sure yeah. that as I kind of got into the main beat and started putting together what was gonna be the, the first part of the song, that I had something that was sort of getting me excited about like, okay, what's coming up and does a build that wasn't gonna be like the traditional rise into something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a rise and then a drop, I wanted, Let's build the drums up and then get right into it. And that was also yeah. a little bit of a, a, of a reference to the original, which did sort of the same thing. Yeah, it definitely like just hops right in. Exactly. Um, you got those like vocal samples that are. Yep. And that tuned. yeah, and that was because <laughs> I just needed something as a, as a little bit of a lead and wanted to have that sort of glide so that I could I could mess with the pitches of them. Uh, mainly because I think it was sort of important to have something more dynamic instead of just looping it over and over and over again. Yeah, and so do you remember where you got those vocal samples from? That was, uh, I think that was a sample pack of vocals from uh, Native Instruments for Machine. And okay. it was basically taking those and, and applying it so that they're legato and that if you switch between them quick enough, you can actually hear the pitch changing between yeah. the two, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing, you got this labeled as strings right here. Which is really interesting because if you listen to the strings by itself, you don't think it could fit that well into this uh, sampled riff that you have, but they actually do fit really well together. It's got that, I want to keep that dreamy sort of uh, soundscape that is kind of providing, um, I don't know, it's, it's, anytime I've heard strings that have been done really well and they've kind of given a lot of processing to and a lot of effects to, I think it can actually add this sort of spacey ambient texture to it right and yeah. so i wanted to kind of complement the original uh uh samples i was taking from it definitely yeah i definitely think you complimented it but like also this is a very new part that you layered on top that you would never have expected and we got these uh what would you describe these as because this is one of my favorite parts right here when these come in let's just actually take a listen to this whole thing right here Yeah, man, I gotta point out those like crescendoing horns. Yeah, so that was uh, I wanted I wanted to put the horns into that's sort of like uh, 
thing that I've been hearing a lot of in like trap or like future basses, like mm-hmm. including some of these horn sounds. And I just, for me, it was like, I wanted to include them, but I didn't want it to be too obvious. Yeah. And I thought the buildup just made it very distinct from the first part, right? So it's yeah. like the first part is sort of an introduction to what is eventually going to be in the sound. Right, right. And then you got those like very tight snare hits as well. Yeah, and this layering actually the original snare hits with another one to kind of give it a little bit of dimension to it while still trying to keep it cohesive. Yeah. And I, the, I mean the the sort of dun 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 dun. That's one of my favorite parts just because there's so much more energy to it from the original. And so when I start layering on like the hi hats and and uh, like close and open and the different sort of shaker sounds and stuff like that, it, it really became. Um, it was like the feel I wanted, so I felt like that's when it kind of it came together for me. Yeah, yeah, especially now that all the pieces are playing, everything kind of ties back together and it's like a very full sound. Yeah, exactly. And then didn't want it to go too long because there's a lot going on with it. And so I'm yeah. um, trying to use it to sort of put into some mixes that I was doing and everything. So I wanted to have this kind of, it's interesting when you see people who are listening to it, you, they they recognize it. They're like, I know this is from somewhere, right? Yeah. But like, it's enough going on that it, uh, I like it as a kind of just a little wink to the to the original. Yeah, there's something to say about the fact that like you have all the elements of a full song, but didn't need to like make it you know seven minutes long. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a lot to <laughs> handle for seven minutes. You know yeah. what I mean? You you got the point across. You know, like the end, as I said, is something that like encompasses all of the different elements that you've kind of built up to. Um, yeah, definitely like one of my favorite parts is that uh, crescendoing horns that, was there like a song in particular or is it just something you were messing around with that you just like came back and decided that's something I want to try? Yeah, so I guess I was, when I was tr- I was thinking about maybe using the horns as a lead and then trying to sort of see if they would be move up and down and if I'd kind of basically use them as a lead and it was just really, it was way too messy. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'll try it. Maybe just quiet with a single note. I like that a little bit better. And so it was sort of a process of moving from way too too much going on to then something that I felt really good about because it added energy, it wasn't overpowering everything else, and yet it definitely sets the second portion of it apart from the first. Yeah, not only that, but I think like you said, it's got the trappiness of the horns, but like I don't hear too many trap songs that use the horns in that way. So it kind of like is a trap, but not a trap part of the song. Exactly, exactly, yeah, I didn't want... when this like when it first came out, I feel like a lot of what the Dust Brothers were doing in that soundtrack was a little bit more like minimalist with mm-hmm. certain like quick areas of explosion of sounds, and I wanted to sort of again kind of keep to that. So I was trying to take elements that I appreciated from the original and then put it into this. Awesome, cool man. This has been a new episode of Beat Roots. We're gonna actually hop in and do a quick tutorial with Nick over here, where he's gonna explain some more intricacies of the track. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in two weeks.